In this video, I will talk you through the implementation of an event study in Excel. I used this model in a previous video, which derived test statistics or confidence intervals for accumulated abnormal returns. Let's explore the model in a bit more detail. How exciting! This model implements a constant mean return model you can of course extend the Excel model by using a market model. This requires additional data on the stock market index. I obtained the data for free from Yahoo Finance. There are many ways to access the data, which I explained in another video. In particular, it might be useful to use Python to obtain the data. Now this is relevant if you download a large amount of data for various stocks. The worksheet labeled event study contains our calculations. Let's have a little look. We start with the normal return model, which refers to a constant mean return model. So we assume that stock returns are mean reverting in the estimation window. Hence, stock returns fluctuate around a long-term average, which we can estimate. We can specify a start date of the estimation window and the length of the estimation window. 180 days is a very standard choice for the length of an estimation window. Let's have a look at the equations and try to understand how they work. In the price column, which refers to column B, we use the VLOOKUP function and the IF function. The VLOOKUP function obtains the share price starting with the first day of the estimation window. So if we look more carefully at this equation, we have here the VLOOKUP, where we refer to the fifth column of our data sheet. Now the fifth column refers to the daily closing price. So we refer here to our data sheet and we go into the daily closing price. And we try to find the correct price for a certain lookup value. The lookup value is a combination of our starting date plus the day number. We start here at zero, so it would be simply the start of our estimation window, and that would refer to our share price in this particular case. We always add one day when we move to the next day of the estimation window. So you see that here. So we refer to the previous day plus one. However, we check whether we still need more days. So we check whether the length of our estimation window is reached or not. The if function ensures that we get missing values or in this case empty cells when we reach the end of the estimation window. There are many other ways to achieve something similar in Excel. The isNumber function, which we use um, later in the return column, returns a boolean. So here I check whether the day is actually a number. If yes, I use the lookup function. If no, I just do here the empty cell. So column A creates the day count of the estimation window, checking whether we reach the required length. Note that we lose one observation as we need to derive returns. So we need to go from zero up to 180 to get to the 180 days required. Let's look at the return. So as you can see, the return refers to a log return, taking the log of the current price minus the log of the previous price. Again, we use an if function to check whether we have observations. We obtain the mean and residuals are the deviations from this estimated mean. 
So here in our constant mean return model, we refer to our average value and the residuals are deviations from that mean. Again, I make use of the if function as before. Finally, the sample variance is derived. You see that here in this cell, which refers to the sample variance based on the residuals. For the event window, we proceed in a very similar manner. The event day is specified. You see that in cell C15. And we also specify the length of the event window. Note that we construct a symmetric event window around the event date, which is a default approach. So in the price column, now this is now column J for our event window, we proceed as in the previous case using the VLOOKUP function and the IF function in this combination to look up the correct price. We calculate returns as before and abnormal returns refer to our estimate for our mean return. So that's the deviation of the return during the event window from its expected or normal return. The variance of abnormal returns is derived based on the equation we discussed in the previous video in quite a bit of detail. So you see that done here. So here we also account for the sampling error as discussed. Um, here is our standard deviation. So it's just the square root of the variance. Cumulated abnormal returns or CARs refer to the sum of these abnormal returns. So we use here the sum function starting in L21 and then we would just continue adding up these abnormal returns. Again, we check with the IF function whether we reach the end of the event window. Now the standard deviation increases with time. So that's the square root of time. So here is our time measure, which again makes use of the if statement to adjust for the length of our event window. And then of course we obtain our upper and lower bounds. So these are the confidence intervals. So it's 1.96 times the respective standard deviation. So you have this diffusion happening because we know under the null hypothesis where the event doesn't have any significant impact, cars behave like random walks. So you would expect that with 95% level of confidence, the cars would be inside this confidence interval. And you see here that um, in the beginning of a period, we go above that level and later we go back inside. So that can be used for significance testing as discussed in the previous video. Of course, results can be plotted and also shown in tables as you wish. You can obtain the Excel model from GitHub. You can find the link in the description. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. See you next time. May the force be with you.